Hello Facebook family and YouTube friends. This is Judy. Um, I'm here today. Um, I'm on the cuff basically. I don't really have a script. But um, I felt um, that God impressed on me to talk to people about fear. Um, as we see all these cataclysmic events unfolding all around the world, um, it's very natural for those who do not have a relationship with Jesus, a personal relationship, to be fearful of all of these events. It would be very, very normal for you because you're not anchored in the Lord. Okay? Um, if you see me, I'm very peaceful and calm and I post a lot of current events and these are some of these videos are horrific in nature and not that I don't feel for the people that are perishing or uh, that I don't have compassion because some days I just cry for them but I don't walk around in a state of fear for my own safety and when you make Jesus the Lord of your life and put him first before the world and be deny your own flesh the things you want for yourself you have to take that selfish part of you and put it aside and make Jesus first and be obedient uh, when you do that he will give you his peace you will not be riddled with fear in these terrible times and these times are going to get a lot worse uh, let me just read you a few scriptures about what God says about fear in 2 Timothy 1 7 for God hath not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of sound mind now that means when you're in a fearful state and your anxiety starts to kick in your adrenaline starts to pump and you lose your ability to think rationally anybody who suffers from anxiety disorder knows what I'm saying but with the Lord you're not gonna have any of that because you have trusted in him you put your life in his hands that's what faith is all about and when you do that there are great re rewards while you're on the earth okay you're not going to fear the unknown you're not going to fear for your life and safety because you put your life in the hands of the Lord the creator of the heavens and the earth a lot of people get confused because they worship the earth because God made it but what they forget is that the earth is a creation yeah God created it but the creator has to come before his creation okay we have things on the earth that we're put here we're put here for a reason and we're put here and God has given us all provisions um, and as we live out our uh, life expectancy here we all have an expiration date that's predetermined so you can either walk through this life in fear of not knowing what's around the corner because you'll kind of like walking with a blindfold on and you have no anchor but when you are anchored in Jesus you walk in faith and you know that his eyes are ahead of you as you take each step and he has this angelic hedge of protection around his saints he's not going to let anything happen to them and if he does you're going to you, it's all going to be for his glory or it's all going to turn out good okay let's go now to 1 john 4 18. there is no fear in love instead perfect love drives out fear mm. so you see one thing leads to the other if you give yourself surrender yourself to the lord jesus and have faith that he's going to transform you that he is now going to dwell in your soul in your spirit in your core okay and he's going to cast out all negative spirits from your being fear is a negative spirit it's from Satan it's not from God okay so if you're walking around with the spirit of fear you have to purge that 
out of your system through the grace of the Lord Jesus. When you come to him, he will get rid of that. You can't cast that out yourself. Okay, now where was I? Okay, in love, instead, um, in love, instead, perfect love dries out fear because fear hath not torment. Okay, do I look tormented? No, I don't. Because thank you, Lord Jesus, praise God, that he's given me peace. And how he's given me his peace is because I make the time for him every day to sit and talk to him. And through this obedient behavior, he got rid of most of my uh, earthly vices, so to say, you know, whatever you carry around that is standing in the way between you and having a perfect relationship with him. He'll get rid of that for you. He'll make you perfect just like him. Now, Jesus doesn't have fear. Look what they did to him. He trusted the Father in heaven. And he endured and he overcame the world. He threw it off. Okay? He that feareth is not made perfect in love. When you're made perfect in love, you won't have fear. You might, Satan might creep in and give you a little bit of momentary fear, but then what you need to do is to present it to the Lord immediately, okay? Put it at the foot of the cross, pray on it, and boom, it's out. I, I could tell you once I, I became afraid, um, maybe about a month ago, and um, I don't know, I think I just spent the whole day kind of in tears uh, crying. Um, something got in, you know, listen, even the saints, even the, uh, people that are walking with Jesus still can be under Satan's assault. Um, and so then I was watching TV and all of a sudden the Lord put up this number. I don't remember what it was, but I knew that I had to look that number up. And when I looked that number up, he led me to a pastor a pastor's this link from this pastor from um, I don't know either the early 1900s or the 1800s and this pastor was so huge he used to preach in places to like 10,000 people the Word of God without any amplification and he the Lord led me to a certain passage based on that number he flashed on the TV and what it said I'll just kind of summarize it for you because I don't have it at hand but he said whatever happens beneath the clouds know and trust in that not one hair on your head am I going to let anybody hurt you and when I read that I had a big smile on my face because I knew that the Father had led me to this particular scripture and I knew it came from him and I knew it was him trying to take the fear out of me and boom, it just went. And that's how the Father works. You know, I got my little baby right here. Come here, Teddy boy. Come here. You see? This is Teddy. He loves his mommy. Yes, he does. He's a good boy. Good boy? Yeah. <laughs> He's interrupting my sermon, but that's okay. All right, let's see. Where do I go from here? I have another scripture. Luke 12, 5. Okay, but now this is God talking, but I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. So the Lord is saying, you really need to fear the Lord. And when you fear the Lord, God takes away your fear. See? So that's where you should direct your fear. Fear the Lord because if you don't fear the Lord and you don't get right with the Lord, you're going to fall into satanic fear and you will be persecuted and tormented within yourself. You won't be able to get out of that. Okay. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Psalm 34, 9. 
O fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. So his saints, the people that are loyal to the Lord, that have a personal intimate relationship with him, he says, his saints, there is no want. We're okay because we are following the steps of Jesus. Okay, and that's what you have to do. The Bible is your roadmap. Okay, the Lord left this for us, like, you know, the Indiana Jones movies, they had these maps that led them to the Holy Grail and all of that. Well, this is your map to get through the age, okay? And right now, we're at the end of the age. I believe very, very soon we're going to enter into the last seven years of the earth here. We're only going to have seven years left. And you know, when I say that to you, if you're not right with the Lord, it's going to feel very scary to know that your world is going to end. The, the destruction of the world will happen within the next seven years. You're going to fear for your own life. You're going to fear for your grandchildren. You're going to fear for your children. Okay? But where are you going to go? Who's going to really take that fear away the only place you can assuage that fear is to go to the lord with it and give it up he's the only one that could send you safety he's going to send you the lifesaver that you're going to put around you as we coast through all of these devastating events that are going to happen and believe me the lord said that what we're seeing now is like uh, the pregnancy of a woman when she's ready to give birth. As the contractions come, they start to begin to come faster and faster and faster. And at the end of her birth, they're almost like, you know, every, every couple of minutes or whatever. And that's what's happening with all these hurricanes, tsunamis, mudslides, fires, droughts, pestilence. Um, all of these diseases that are starting to run rampant all over the world. Famine. I, the list goes on and on and on and on. And, you know, right here in northern New Jersey, we've been very, very blessed. The last two or three weeks, we've had the most pleasant weather. And I thank God and I praise God every single day for that, the beautiful sky and the weather and the protection that he's given us here um, that people in the other parts of the world are not are not getting a reprieve at all and they're dying they're perishing okay now you know you can not want to hear this what I'm saying you can you know turn off the news and put on some music you know or you can go and out to eat and drink with your friends and get wasted and put your mind in another reality but the fact of the matter is it's happening and I'm going to make some predictions here. I'm going to go out on a limb. I don't usually make a lot of predictions. But I'm going to tell you that September is going to bring such devastation to the United States. I don't know what it is that's coming. But I know something really big is coming. Whether it's a nuclear attack or it's an asteroid hitting the Earth or it's a huge earthquake or a tsunami from something that fell into the water from the sky, okay? Or it's a hurricane, or it's a tornado. Uh, something is going to come down, and it's going to follow the stock market crashing, okay? Right now, I really believe that the uh, country is bankrupt, but they are not telling the people that they're bankrupt. They're printing money that has no nothing behind it okay and they're coasting because the government knows that there's some cataclysmic event that's going to happen and they are going to use that cataclysmic event when the people are caught off their guard and they're running around like a chicken without a head because their house blew up they have nothing to eat they have no water they have nothing and the government has been setting up, uh, they've had these drills in Texas um, 
it's called Jade Helm 15 and now I just they just called Fort Bragg three days ago to start an emergency training for uh, uh, to train for uh, like a war situation in this country on our soil. Look it up. Go look. Um, you know, you think I'm a conspiracy theorist? Go right ahead. But this is all out there. And if you want to bury your head in the sand, go right ahead because you're fearful. And the reason you're fearful is because you don't have a relationship with the Lord. So you see, it's like it's like that slinky that goes down the steps. You know, one one bad action just leads you to another, leads you to another to just bury yourself. You don't want to hear anything. It's like a kid sticking their fingers in their ear, right, when their parents are trying to tell them something they don't want to hear. But this is the truth, all right? The government is training uh, FEMA, uh, FEMA forces and military forces with tanks and all this heavy, heavy military equipment to fight in in difficult terrain what does that mean earthquakes where the earth is moved and shifted and there's all kinds of debris and buildings have collapsed these tanks have to crawl on top of everything they're training people all over the country to be prepared for something that's coming and not only that, they've got all these Walmarts that have closed down across the country that they they have barbed wire and um uh, and cameras up on top. These are going to be the FEMA camps that they're going to send people that are displaced to. You're going to have to register yourself. All right. They have this all set up. You think it's conspiracy? All right. Bury your head in the sand and just wait and see what happens. But it's it's going to be too late for you because the Lord is going to remove His saints before all of this hits the fan. And if you're not right with the Lord, you're going to be left behind. And you know, and I know something, when they give you that, when they offer you that, that chip to put in your hand or your forehead, that is going to have every single uh, thing that the government could know about you, including your retina scan, your DNA they'll have, all your medical records, and you're, you're selling your soul for a bowl of soup and a glass of water. And you're going to be in a camp. So it's up to you what you want to do. Do you want to just put your head in the sand and wait for something to happen and then say, well, you know, there was somebody that came here and told me. God sent somebody to tell me, but I didn't believe them because I was too busy going out to dinner with my grandkids and going here and taking them, buying Halloween costumes and preparing. Because you, what you should be doing right now is you should be looking up. You should be connected to the Lord and you should be living your life every day as if God's going to break the sky and come down and take you off the earth. That's how you really should be living your life. Not looking forward to a concert coming up next week. Not looking forward and planning a birthday party two months from now. Believe me, there's a whole group of people just like me who know what's coming. And then there's a whole bunch of group of people like you who think this bunch of people are crazy. But it's not. Go on YouTube. Go search any of these things out. You're going to see hundreds upon thousands of videos from people, many, many people all around the world who are on to what I'm on to. Okay? And there's a reason that I'm putting these videos out because the Lord has his hand on my back because there's somebody out there that needs to hear what I'm saying. I don't know who it is. I have, I don't know, almost 500 people on my Facebook friends account and uh, page. And uh, since I've been putting out these um, profound videos, nobody goes near them. Nobody clicks on them. It was like I, I have some kind of uh, cooties or something. And what is that? Is that, am I saying you think I'm nuts or you're afraid of what I'm saying? That might be true. So you're staying away from it? Shame on you. You should know me better. I'm probably the most intelligent woman that you ever met in your life. Spiritually intelligent. So listen, I didn't come here to scold anybody. 
okay? I came here in front of this screen. I'm taking my time out to tell you that you don't have to sit in fear. Things are going to get a lot worse. It's happening fast, okay? It's happening fast, people. Make yourself right with the Lord. I'm going to put up the um, the salvation prayer in the in the comments of this video. And um, if you come to the Lord, and all you have to do is confess your sins to Him, tell Him you're a sinner, tell Him you believe that He died on the cross for you, and He shed your blood to wash your sins away, and that you're going to devote your life to him now and you're going to start turning away from sin and following him and then all you have to do after that praise the Lord okay you'll you just have to start getting your Bible out and reading wherever you can go to my prayer group on Facebook prayers online where I post devotionals every day we'll stay together and support each other as things continue to get a lot worse in America okay so um, I wanna you know say I love you you know I love you <laughs> I do I really do because this is all out of love I mean I'm not looking for anything I give the glory to God he's he's motivating me listen it's not popular to love Jesus the world hates a Christian these days because a Christian represents things that they have to give up to be a good Christian so when they see a Christian coming when they hear about Christianity they poo-poo it right away because that means they reminds them that they have to give something up that their flesh is enjoying so it's not popular why would I pick something to do that is gonna make me so unpopular I've never been popular okay so I know what it feels like to be an outcast or a black sheep because I've basically had that kind of a life. But I'm doing something for you. The Lord has instructed me to do this. And woe to me if I don't carry it out, okay? Because that's what the Lord said. If you don't do what I tell you to do, Judy, you're not going to fall to my favor. So I have to do what my father says. I have to be a good child of God. I have to be obedient. I have to be disciplined because he put me in a very, very responsible position as an ambassador to him and his kingdom by talking to you. So bye for now. I'll be back because I have plenty to talk about. He's, I, he's giving me a whole list. He's keeping me busy here. Okay. <laughs> okay. God bless and have a great uh, Saturday. Shalom.